Speaker. I'm truly honored uh, to rise today to move acceptance of the speech by the throne given by his honor, the Lieutenant Governor. It is a privilege to do this on behalf of my constituents in Calgary North Hill, for which I have had the honor of serving my neighbors for the last four years. I would like to begin by thanking the Lieutenant Governor for both his wonderful words and his commitment to this great province. I would also like to thank him for form formally beginning this fifth session of the 27th Legislature. Mr. Speaker, his honor's distinguished career as both a member of the Canadian Armed Forces and as a military advisor and as a volunteer with hum humanitarian causes should be looked upon with the utmost respect of all members of this Legislature and all Albertans. I also commend his dedication to continue serving the people of Alberta. The Lieutenant Governor stated that he arrived in this province in his early 50s as a young soldier and that he, and that he has observed firsthand how far we have come as a province. His experience and insights are a testament to a long tradition of hard work and perseverance seen in Alberta. Characteristics that have helped this province become a world leader in industry, research, and the production of natural resources. I would like to extend a thanks and gratitude also to our Honourable Premier. The past year has been an incredibly demanding year for her, and she has served in the office of Premier, of Premier with integrity, fierce dedication, and unwavering loyalty to the people of Alberta. Yeah, yeah. Her guidance, or under her guidance, Alberta continues to be a place with strong leadership, innovative solutions, and unlimited opportunity. Alberta not only continues to weather the lingering economic downturn better than any jurisdiction in Canada and North America, but it also remains a prosperous place to do business. I ask any member of this legislature, or any Albertan, where else would you rather be than right here, right now, in Alberta? This is our province, and this is our time to shine our time to secure the quality of life and prosperity of today for future generations, to which every human being on this planet aspires to. While opportunities for this great province are plentiful, this government recognizes that building a land of opportunity for all comes with many challenges. As his honor, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor stated in the throne speech yesterday, and I quote, Albertans expect better and demand excellence. The Honourable Premier has continued to listen and respond to what is most important to Albertans, focusing on the core building blocks of a great society, things such as education, health care, and maintaining a strong economy. This government recognizes that generations of Albertans have worked hard to create the many advantages that we enjoy today, and today we are obliged to do the same for future generations of Albertans, Mr. Speaker. However, this government also recognizes that we face many, difficulty, many difficulties in a modern society that requires innovative solutions, because exponential change is the only constant that we have today. Mr. Speaker, decisions that we, decisions that we make toward the continued prosperity of this province requires a resilient and dedicated vision. A vision with a clear purpose, which has a healthy, educated, and pro uh, prosperous populace at its core. Together, this government will ensure that our choices will be deliberate and will help improve our quality of life and secure our future prosperity. Mr. Speaker, you, as well as many in this legislature, would know that I was ecstatic to hear the Lieutenant Governor state that this, government, this government's commitment to establishing a long-term fiscal framework for our province. This is something that I've long been advocating since uh, being elected to represent the people of Calgary North Hill. This starts with the Premier's groundbreaking commitment to results-based budgeting as introduced to her as the first bill of this legislative session. Efficiency and responsibility are themes that I often hear at the doors in my constituency, and I am sure they are echoed right across this province. This bill will challenge automatic growth of, the automatic growth of spending by assigning funds where they are needed. 
It will require a zero-based budgeting process to ensure good value for taxpayers' dollars. Every three years, each government department and program will come under close scrutiny as to the need, outcome achievement, and efficiency of its existence. Mr. Speaker, myself and a number of my honourable colleagues in this legislature have long advocated for such a robust and institutional review of government programs and spending. As a result of the leadership from this Premier, we are now going to make significant progress and achieve, achievement in this area. As someone who has a significant professional experience in program evaluations, and as the Parliamentary Assistant for Treasury Board and Enterprise, I look forward to the potential impact of this on future generations of Albertans because it will allow us to allocate money in a disciplined and intelligent manner while continuing to move the quality of life enjoyed by all Albertans forward. Mr. Speaker, I also want to touch base on the other aspects of establishing a long-term <laughs> fiscal framework for this province that were highlighted by His Honour yesterday. He indicated that this government will review the Alberta Heritage Savings Trust Fund, the Sustainability Act, or this, pardon me, the Sustainability Fund, capital spending and infrastructure projects, gaming revenue, and income taxes. I fully support this type of dialogue and contemplation. As the Honourable Lieutenant Governor said yesterday, and I quote, long established ways are being called into question and comfortable assumptions are, are being examined anew. The future prosperity and quality of life of this province will depend on this type of thinking. It will ensure that Alberta will remain in its position of having the strongest fiscal position and the most competitive tax structure in all of North America. As a result, Alberta will continue to be a beacon for investment and for those seeking opportunity, fortifying our already robust economy for future generations. A strong economy leads to an improved quality of life and a greater investment in health care and education, which in turn fosters further progress and prosperity. Albertans understand that this is the foundation of our success, and so does this government, Mr. Speaker. Education is another pillar to the foundation of our success. And as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, and I quote, the nature of work and progress is changing Pardon me, the nature of work and progress is changing, and as technology advances, the, the demand for highly skilled, education, educated workers will increase. Mr. Speaker, my constituency of Calgary North Hill is home to many young professionals and their families that recognize the importance of a quality education. Calgary has become one of the major epicenters of technology and business across North America, and it is imperative that Albertans are equipped with the necessary tools and skills to thrive in the global knowledge economy. This means exposing all of our youth from a young age to positive learning environments that incite curiosity and that they have a thirst for knowledge. Our K-12 education system is widely recognized as one of the best in the world, and I support this Premier in raising the bar in this area. Ironically, Mr. Speaker, raising the bar in public education was the slogan that I used in my campaign for election to the public school board about seven years ago in my first foray into elected public service. I believe then, and I am even more convinced today, that education is the great equalizer of opportunity in our society. We must not waver from trying to improve and build upon success in this area. The future prosperity and progress of this province depends on it. The quality of life of future Albertans depends on it. I am thankful that the Honourable Premier shares this same passion and vision in this area as I do. As an active member of the community, Mr. Speaker, through coaching baseball and football, I also appreciate the importance of encouraging youth to be active at a young age. The physical and mental benefits uh, from such activities are so important to the well-being and quality of life of all individuals. However, as people continue to live longer, access to primary care becomes more and more essential. I'm excited, Mr. Speaker, about the way our government is moving forward on health care. 
by allowing frontline staff to handle more duties and responsibilities of, uh, of health care professionals, such as nurse practitioners, this government has taken steps to improve efficiency in the health care system. Moreover, the expansion of community-based care through the introduction of family care clinics staffed by multidisciplinary teams further demonstrates the commitment of this province uh, and, and the commitment it has towards providing the most efficient and accessible health care system as possible. Albertans expect a health care system that responds to the needs of their community and that maximizes the use of resources available. And these values are understood by our Premier. And it's this, under, this understanding is also true when it comes to Alberta's energy sector or Alberta's energy strategy. The role of the energy industry, the role that the energy industry uh, plays is vital to our collective prosperity and the livelihoods of many families in my constituency and in our province. If done right, the advantages of our natural resources can, se can secure an unparalleled quality of life and secure prosperity for multiple generations of Albertans. I have no doubt that this government and our Premier will stand up for the interests of our province when it comes to natural resource development. And that starts with recognizing the need for Alberta to diversify its customer base and not, to be, and not to be too reliant on the United States for our energy exports. I agree with the Lieutenant Governor that we must access global markets with respect to our energy resources in order to achieve our greatest returns on those resources. I also agree with him that all Albertans share a deep love and respect for the environment. Our government must not forget that Albertans understand that in this province what is economical is environmental and what is environmental is economic. Moving forward with an environmental monitoring plan that is credible, transparent and science-based in concert with the federal government is a step in the right direction to ensure that Alberta continues to have the social license with Albertans and with the rest of the world to develop our resources. This is all part of a nation-building exercise that is being led by our Premier, Mr. Speaker, a process where all Canadians will see and realize the tremendous economic benefits of our vast natural resources of which are demanded right across the world. With allies and like-minded governments in BC and Saskatchewan and in Ottawa, and with the, less, the West leading the country in economic and population growth, our Premier recognizes the opportunity that is on our horizon. And she is ready to lead and to seize the opportunities that come along with this for all Albertans. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I would again like to thank His Honor, the Lieutenant Governor, for his inspiring words and his dedicated public service. I also again would like to thank the Honorable Premier for her leadership and vision. As I go door to door talking to my constituents in Calgary North Hill, I sense an optimism that is so strong, so prideful. Albertans have confidence in their government. They have confidence in their fellow Albertans. But most importantly, they have confidence in themselves. This reflects the leadership style and grace that this Premier has shown in her short but for successful time in office to date. And I believe that under her guidance and with the dedication and spirit of the people of Alberta, we are about to embark on what will be a truly special and remarkable time in the history of this province. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's been an honour to be able to comment on His Honour's speech from the throne yesterday. Thank you.